تي ام يو شيخ صباح الاحمد الجابر الصباح هذا الماندي دي من السيريال كونسل الاكسترا اوردينري سيشن ات دار سلوى اكومبرد باي هيز هاينس دي كرون برنس شيخ نواف الاحمد الجابر الصباح ناشونال اسمبلي سبيكر مرزوق علي الغنم اند مينستر اوف امير ديوان افيرز شيخ علي جراح الصباح earlier the speaker said he was invited to take part in the meeting cabinet meetings that are chaired by his highness the emir and in which the assembly speaker takes part are normally very important and take sensitive decisions speaker ghanem however did not reveal the type of the decisions or on which issues but the meeting comes one day after the cabinet imposed partial 11 hour curfew from 5 pm to 4 am in a bid to contain gatherings The Ministry of Health announced on Monday one new coronavirus case was discovered in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number to 189 recorded cases. During the daily conference, the spokesperson of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Abdullah Sanad, said that the new case was a Kuwaiti citizen who recently returned from the United Arab Emirates. The spokesperson added that five cases are still in the intensive care unit, three of them in critical condition and two cases in stable condition. The number leaving quarantine at 702 people overall. The Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement Russia and Turkey were forced to cut short their second joint patrol in series at the bridge on Monday due to security concerns. The patrol is meant to cover the M4 highway, which links the cities of Alibu and Latakia. Their first joint patrol was also cut short earlier this month due to what Moscow called rebel provocations. Russia and Turkey are trying to uphold a ceasefire agreement in the region. The Palestinian Health Ministry and the Israeli military said the occupation forces shot and killed a 32-year-old Palestinian man early Monday who was hurling rocks at Israeli troops. The military said it thwarted an attack and opened fire at a number of suspects who were throwing rocks at Israeli vehicles on a highway in the central West Bank near the town of Kliklia. It says one of the suspects was killed while another was wounded and escaped. Clashes often erupted the West Bank between Israelis and Palestinians but have dipped considerably since the outbreak of the coronavirus. The state-run Qatari Committee to Rebuild Gaza said Monday, the state of Qatar announced 150 million US dollars in aid to the Gaza Strip over a period of six months to support United Nations humanitarian programs in the Palestinian territory and efforts to contain the new coronavirus outbreak. This is to complement Qatar's efforts to alleviate the suffering of the brotherly Palestinian people and in support of the United Nations relief and humanitarian programs in the Gaza Strip. The package will also include financial assistance to support the people of the besieged strip in combating the outbreak of the novel coronavirus and a contribution from Qatar in the global efforts to limit the effects of the pandemic. New Secretary of State Mark Pompeo landed in Afghanistan Monday on a previously unannounced visit to help salvage a historic deal between Washington and the Taliban, struck at the end of February but marred by political feuds and violence. Secretary Pompeo landed in Kabul to meet with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and his political rival Abdullah Abdullah, who also claims he is president. The visit comes just a day after the Afghan government and the Taliban held their first discussion on arranging prisoner exchanges, a key step in a border push for peace following a withdrawal deal signed between Washington and the militants last month. Norway's Foreign Ministry said on Monday the United Nations will create a fund to support the treatment of coronavirus patients worldwide. The Norwegian Foreign Ministry said in a statement a multi-dollar fund under UN auspices will provide predictability for our partners and help to make the efforts more effective. The ministry added the purpose of the fund is to assist developing countries with weak health systems in addressing the crisis as well as to tackle the long-term consequences. It said a formal announcement could be made later this week. The devastation of the coronavirus outbreak in Iran is raising pressure on the United States to ease sanctions on the Islamic Republic, 
So far, the Trump administration isn't budging. According to the Health Ministry, 1,650 deaths from the coronavirus pandemic have been recorded. The country's leaders and some aid groups said that America's crushing maximum pressure campaign against it is worsening a humanitarian disaster. Washington has offered humanitarian assistance to its long-time poor, but the country's top authority, Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, on Sunday rejected the offer. Great Britain said it was ramping up its provision of protective equipment to healthcare workers fighting the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus and bringing in the army to help with the deliveries after struggling to get enough supply to hospitals. Health Minister Matt Hanuk said in a statement the distribution of delivery of millions of items of personal protective equipment, including masks, will now be carried out by the army who will drive trucks throughout the day and night. Millions more items have been provided to hospitals, ambulance trust, GP practices, care homes and other health services in the last few days after complaints emerged from medical staff that they did not have enough kits. The joint statement from the Department of Health and National Health Service on Monday said that authorities have released a protective kit from the National Stockpile Reserved for Pandemic Influenza. They said that supply of protective equipment was rising. New York implemented dramatic restrictions Monday in an attempt to slow pandemic that has swept across the globe and threatened to make the state one of the world's biggest coronavirus hotspots. As infections soared or in anticipation that they will, officials worldwide warned of a critical shortage of medical supplies. President Donald Trump ordered mobile hospital centers be sent to Washington, California and New York. New York governor ordered non-essential businesses in the state to close and non-essential workers to stay home, starting early on Monday, tightening even further restrictions put in place earlier. Australians began living under strict new lockdown rules on Monday as coronavirus cases topped 1,600 and authorities denied entry to a cruise ship carrying hundreds on board complaining of respiratory illnesses. As new restrictions closing non-essential services came into effect, there were clear signs of economic and social stress, with long queues forming outside offices of the main welfare agency across the country. After reporting only a gradual spread in January, the number of coronavirus cases in Australia now appears to be tracking much sharper increases seen elsewhere, with the most populous states of New South Wales and Victoria recording the fastest rises. The United Arab Emirates announced on Monday it will temporarily suspend all passenger and transit flights amid the novel coronavirus outbreak. According to official reports, the Emirati authorities have decided to suspend all inbound and outbound passenger flights and the transit of airline passenger in the UAE for two weeks as part of precautionary measures taken to curb the spread of the virus. It said the decision, which is subject to review in two weeks, will take effect in 48 hours, adding that cargo and emergency evacuation flights would be exempt. The Philippine Congress held a special session over the Internet on Monday to debate a push by the country's leader to adopt sweeping emergency powers in a bid to avert chaos from the rapid spread of coronavirus. With borders closed to foreigners and tens of millions of people on home quarantine, President Rodrigo Dutrit wants the power to, where necessary, control supplies and public utilities, order businesses to help government and pull funds from state enterprises and departmental budgets to redirect into emergency health needs. It approved the granting of the powers would be one of the most aggressive steps to tackle coronavirus as governments worldwide roll out stricter measures, including across Southeast Asia, which saw a more than doubling of cases in the past weeks to nearly 3,700 from 166 a month ago.